The idea for the Rube Goldberg machine comes from the engine in the QX50. Uh, you know, they're complicated things, but the basics of how an engine operates are really simple. You've got a piston going up and down in the cylinder, it's moving a crank, uh, connecting rod, and that spins a crankshaft. All the technology and everything since the dawn of the automobile, that's been the same. That really hasn't changed um, until this. So, I mean, Nissan has 20, 30 years and hundreds of patents into developing this engine. You've got a, uh, a linkage that effectively changes the length of the connecting rod, which what that ultimately means is you get piston going up and down inside a closed space, and it changes how high it can move within that space, um, which then changes the compression ratio, which you, you know it takes in air and then it compresses it. Or if you've got the piston going a little higher, it compresses more. And so that impacts power, it impacts efficiency. And I mean, this is a huge development. Nissan's not the only company working on it. They're just the first ones to get it to production. So at the end of the day though, to the average consumer, it is completely seamless, it's invisible. You know, you'd never realize, most people probably don't, that the engine in their car is this just major technological breakthrough. It just feels like any other thing. The comedic effect from a Rube Goldberg machine is they are, you know, absurd complexity to accomplish an everyday task. The game Mousetrap is what most people know Rube Goldberg machines from. It's this, you know, crazy multi-step thing. You've got stuff going, you got boots kicking this over, you know, whatever going on. And at the end of this whole crazy long process, like something totally mundane happens. And so that's kind of what we have going on here. It was an interesting process trying to build this, uh, the Rube Goldberg machine. We, um, we kind of decided right off the bat that this is not something we can do ourselves. Um, and uh, found a few people online on YouTube. Uh, the first guy wanted a lot of money. <laughs> we were debating around the office what else we could think of that cost as much per second is what he was asking. And we settled on space tourism. But beyond that, we weren't really sure. We found Matt through Purdue. Purdue University has a, uh, I mean, well, they have a rich engineering program. They also have a, uh, a long tradition, actually, of competitive Rube Goldberg machine building. From what I understand, it started, you know, I mean, of course, decades ago, like in the 30s, is like a competition between engineering fraternities that eventually uh, turned into what is now a I think it, nationwide, if not global, competition for Rube Goldberg machine building. Purdue is still like the powerhouse of Rube Goldberg machine building, which I think is awesome. Well, you know, not well known for it, but that's a pretty cool thing to be known for. I'd contacted their engineering school, uh, a guy who was involved with that club, and he put me in touch with a few alumni who uh, might be able to help. Turns out Matt lives not too far from us, you know, lives and works in Metro Detroit and I uh, contacted him and he was happy to do it. And you know, <laughs> it turned out awesome. We built the machine for fun, of course. I mean, you know, and like, again, the point of a true Rube Goldberg machine is absurd complexity. And, you know, so the machine is fun. It's this interesting thing to watch, but in the end, like that shouldn't take away from that engine that it works as seamlessly as it does, that nobody's gonna realize what they have is quite an accomplishment.